All right, here we are, back for another Tabletop Tuesday. This time we've got Dean, and what product have we got, Dean? But this is the first Tabletop Tuesday. They won't know that if they if they're just if they search this up, they won't know that. They won't know that. You're right. That's right. So um, some of you, uh, I believe, what what do they call those people that subscribe to you? Subscribers. Yeah, they might have seen the completed one of these in one of the short little videos that we did. Oh, a member, yeah. And the member, member thing, yes, member. that's true. Yeah, right? Yep. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna make, I'm gonna call it a fry trap, a fry saver. Um, it could be used for quarantining fish, uh, but we're making it out of some two parts, basically. Two parts, uh, we will have the links on there. Uh, you can get them from Amazon. You can probably get them from your hardware store also. If you buy these parts from Amazon, I get to go to dinner. I told Dean Think I'll buy him that. dinner if enough people actually do this project. Right, if enough of you do it. So let's get right into it. Um, we're just here in my living room. What I've got, um, I call this backer bar. Um, but it, what it is, is it's the um, polyfoam strip that is used in home construction, happens to float. Um, and we've got a, a basket. Now this is actually a pond basket. It's designed for planting pond plants in where the water can get all the way around. But if you look at it, see in there? Yeah, I think you're gonna see little holes. Big fish can't get through, little fish can. That's the whole key to this. I'll show you some other tips with this in a second, but let's get this thing open. Two ways we're gonna use this thing is sitting on top of a tank or floating. The beauty is it works both ways. Um, this backer bar is foam and it floats. So just take it, I put a nice little smooth cut on it. It's very cheap. It's cheap. That 20 feet is like two or three dollars. We're talking this whole project is under 10. Yes. Under 10 and under 10 minutes too. Mm -hmm. So if you can see, I'm just pushing it in here. All the way around. And then I'm gonna cut it to the size that it fits. This is enough for five more baskets at least. Now your goal is you have to make another project with that stuff down the road. There it's you different. Go. I might I might have already done that. I don't know. So what I do is I just take it and literally cram it in there with your my fingers. Does it stay permanently? Maybe, maybe not. You can always cram it back in, but if you go around a few times, it's gonna be in there pretty darn tight. Mine's never failed yet that you made me. I haven't had one fail it yet either. If you worry about it, and this might come up in the uh, in the bowl project uh, someday in the future where I have glued it in, I have used silicone, 100% silicone. Put the silicone down, then push this in, and it'll be in there forever. But this is a 10 minute project. No time for silicone. And it's the styrofoam that floats. That's why we're putting that in there. Right. Exactly. So the basket will float now. Or the foam, I guess, is technically what it's it is. Foam, yeah, it's foam. Yeah. So we will do some B-roll of one floating. In my fish room. In Corey's fish room with the female guppies. And what I do with this is, this is 10 by 10 on top. It's about seven inches on the bottom. It's gonna float and water can get in anywhere, but the female guppies can't get out. So if you put the female guppies inside, when they drop their fry, the fry go out. Um, guppies, mollies, what else drops fry? Um, All the live bears. Sword tails. The other one I can think of that's not a live bear this is useful for would be rice fish. Rice fish would be good, mm -hmm. right. So anything where, or, or maybe even egg scatters, I haven't tried it on that. Or if you put yeah. a pair in, maybe they, and the eggs all come through. The beauty of this particular size is along with it floating like in a 20 gallon or a 40 breeder or, or in your case, the indoor ponds yep. or an outdoor pond in the summertime is if you happen to go to Petco and get one of those dollar per gallon tanks, it sits right on top. 
So it makes, I mean, what we're trying to do here, you got to make your life easy. Quick, easy. Females go in here. Um, what I do is I, I try to get them all on the same cycle. So I, ha I have four females. Get them all pregnant at once. Put them all in here. In a month, they all drop. Take the basket out. Females are in there. Dump them back in their breeding tank. Let them have some fun. Do it again. Yep. It just sits in there. I've said this before that I always wash my new aquariums with soap and water before I use them. And if you look at this, you can probably see me smearing that factory oil. Mm -hmm. Or it might not be from the factory. This could also be from shipping, from sitting in Petco. Um, but either way, I don't want that oil coming out into my fish tank. So I'm going to take this thing outside before I use it. I'm going to scrub it down with Liquid Dawn. It's a dishwashing soap, yes. It's the only one that they use um, in environmental hazards situations. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is it washes clean. Uh, doesn't leave a residue. And I've never had a problem with that. Thoroughly rinsing, I assume. Uh, rent, and you know, if, you're, if you really want to be cautious about the rinse process, dump some white vinegar in and rinse it with that after you've done the soap and it'll take any, care of any residue. Awesome. All right. Now let's give him a preview on another, a failed project because <laughs> Dean's working on projects to do more tabletop stuff on Tuesdays like this, where this project, all we needed was scissors. This Literally, next project scissors. I think only needs an oven in your kitchen. And a marble, but I don't have the marble here right now. Yeah. But, but just expl show what, what happened and what you were trying to do. And then, you know, someday. So guys, that's my failed project. Now, we don't really have time right now to have a contest to see who can guess what that used to be. But it used to be one of these little plastic plates. And in my fish room, I have these six inch diameter, 12 inch tall glass vases that I use for hatching eggs. Um, I also have just recently brought a couple of bettas in where I've set up a filter in them and they evaporate extremely rapidly. So I wanted to cover them. So I wanted to figure out a way where I could have a lid. Uh, and I realized this is not clear. I'm looking for it in clear, but it, this was the experimental process. So I wanted to melt the plate. Well, first I put the plate on and then all the condensation ran down the outside of the jar. That didn't work. So I wanted to melt it and then create a dome. So I pushed it down on a marble so that it slanted so that the drip point would be back in the jar. Worked great, except for I melted it too long. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, not everything works. Yeah. Uh, but we keep trying anyway. But on the Tuesday tips, you'll get what does work. Yeah. And we'll, we'll you know, we'll exactly. fail a bunch and then we'll show you exactly how to do the project and once he finds the clear ones and then we can show you the jars he's using right. and how he's raising the angels it all works together but we do want to bring you these projects with minimal tools maybe you have to buy one ten dollar tool that we'll use over and over again this time was a pair of scissors everyone's got that we don't know what it'll be next time but no power tools and we want right. to be able to do it in your living room without uh family members freaking out yeah exactly and could have done it without scissors. I think that's a tool everyone's got, though. I think Everybody everyone's got has the scissors. scissors so. yeah. All right, we'll see you guys in the next one. Let us know if you want to see more, or if you have ideas that you've done, type it out in a paragraph. We'll experiment, and maybe we'll get to film it someday. There you go.